Hi everyone, it's Eru here. I was just putting some points down. I hope you're here. I hope you're ready to learn. I'd like this to be interactive. So I am going to wait uh, for a minute or two to people come on. I don't want to do other talking uh, because if you're here, if you're following me, then you do have an interest in wealth creation. You want to uh, know how to create wealth, so I'm waiting. Okay, I'm going to get started. I have one viewer, so that's good. But uh, I will appreciate uh, people coming on, asking questions, because we're learning to create wealth, as I've said once or twice before, not just for ourselves. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to help end wealth poverty, world poverty. Sorry, If you are just looking out for your own interests and that of your family, then you are living below the standard God has designed for you. You are not living up to your full potential. So if you and your family are fine, then you need to learn how you can extend yourself outwardly to the family of the world, how we can help more than one charity at a time, five charities at a time, and not just with a little, but with a lot. So this is why we want wealth creation. It's not just for our own comfort, but to to spread the word of God for those who are saved, to spread the kingdom of God, the knowledge of God's love and grace, and to ensure that people who are suffering are not suffering because we are there as uh, the arm of God to help them to reach out in love. So what do you know about wealth creation? So would hi Rita, we'd like to see uh, answers. If you can type in answers or questions, what can you do to create wealth? Why are you, uh, what are you doing to create wealth? And uh, I've put a link there, but we'll come to that. So um, while I'm waiting for answers, uh, creating wealth, I would say it starts with a job. It starts with a job. It starts with a business. First, you need to earn income to be able to make wealth. Uh, unless you fell into it, uh, then those are the two ways I know about. If you have any other answer, even after this recording is over, then do put it in the comment box, do share. What can you do to create wealth? I would say the same again. You need to have a business, you need to have a job, so means of income. You need to be able to uh, provide a service or a product that will cause you to be paid for your service or product or exchange your time for money. This is how you can create wealth. Now, we know what we can do, but the thing is, what are we doing to create wealth? Some of us having conversations with people, and I don't know uh, what your experience is until you type it in, but some people would say, oh, I yes, I've got a bank account. I'm saving money long term, medium term. I'm also doing the ISA thing. Uh, we tried that with our children. And every time they sent the statement, I would rub my head as I looked at the um, interest rate. It was so low on, on those things. So I wouldn't suggest that as a way to create wealth. Yeah, it was really misleading. That, I would say, is at the top of misrepresentation. They give parents, especially young parents at the time, because that's when we started, when our children were really young, that, oh, your children, by the time they're ready to go to uni, you're going to have all this. It's a lie. There was, not a, there was not a lot coming in by way of interest. And I understand later that they trade with these money, so I wouldn't go there for wealth creation, ISAs, bank accounts. Now, 
uh, I've been sharing with people. I took my girls because my son was not around because we all would have gone to the Bank of England. And up until the 31st of this month, you can take yourself, your family, you go there. We wanted to see the vault. That was the only disappointing thing. But the information for me did not disappoint. And one thing I came home with was that the Bank of England, they save gold bullions. They only have two in the mass uh, supply of gold bullions they have down there in their vault. Two belong to them, the rest to other people, individuals, corporations, companies, so forth. But what they said, because it was question and answer time, and I asked, do you have only gold bullions there? Do you just save gold bullions? They said, no, they save some currency. So that was a huge clue for me. And hopefully those of you watching, you will see the clue there for yourself. Now, if the bank, the bank system, which we've all grown to rely on, except for those who still put their money under mattresses, and I don't think there are many people like that nowadays, is that when you're saving back your currency with gold and the bank's doing it so do it too and then it brings us to the next question but how can we afford gold i'll answer that later on so that's one way i know to create wealth uh, that's what i'm doing to create wealth so i'm waiting now for people, well, just Rita watching right now, to put your comment, what are you doing to create wealth? And while you put that in, I'll get up another link. So personally, I've started saving in gold for me and my family. It would be nice to start with a bullion, but the bank confirmed, which I already knew from uh, this link we're looking at right now, that it will cost about 3000 plus to own one of those heavy things. And if you go to the link that I have on my recent post, one of my recent posts and went to the bank, none of us could lift it. We were all given an opportunity to lift one gold bullion, uh, gold bullion which is 9.99.9. .99. So apparently there's no pure gold. The purest form is the one I just mentioned, 9.999.9. .99 .99 percent gold we couldn't lift it i tried using one hand i tried using two and we couldn't lift it, it was really heavy and it cost about three thousand plus so that's one way uh, the thing is not a lot of people get paid enough to be able to afford to buy gold bullion uh for it was coming up to three thousand five or four thousand pounds so when you can't afford that then what's the next step the next step is to go looking lower and I'm not just talking about a thousand pounds or three hundred pounds, but even lower than that. And uh, that's where I'll come to now. This link I've sent, I have it there, uh, on Facebook. It's up there until first week in September, about the fourth. So training is uh, live. It's also online, uh, just to let people know. And that's one thing I've been dwelling on recently. To create wealth, you really don't have to own a business because not everyone needs to have a business, but everyone needs to know how to protect their income. That's how we create wealth. So the point I'm making here, uh, this nine minutes into it, is you create wealth by protecting your income. You protect it from what? From inflation. That's what you're protecting your income from. Because if we look at what income today is worth compared to what it was worth years ago, it's not the same. I did a little exercise um, on Friday. I can't find it now because it just occurred to me that I had done it. And there was something I was referred to from uh, a material I got from... Um, the Bank of England, as I said, the link I will add to this video when I'm done. And in that link, it showed something from 1963. Uh, yes, I remember now. It was um, an old picture in 1963. Uh, I think it was a vault or a warehouse where people were storing gold. And I thought to myself, now, I was born a few years after that. If only my dad had just kept one for me, just one. 1963 to now. Let's just do a quick Google search. How much gold was in 1963? Gold bullion. So gold bullion worth. How much? How? One hand typing, not very good. How much 
was gold bullion in 1963. So yeah, I thought about it. I said, okay, I know that some of our parents were buying houses for a hundred pounds or so thereabouts in the 1960s. So 60s. So if my dad had saved one for each of us, or just one for all of us to share, his 12 children to share one gold bullion. Let's see now. How much was it in 1963 and we're now in 2018? Let's see. Mm, 18, no, don't do that. 1800 is too far away. Sorry about this. This I could have used my laptop. I don't know why I'm using the computer. Okay, so how much was gold in 1800s? Oh, that's too far away. Mm. How much was gold bullion in 1963? Yes. Why are you freezing? Ah, double click. Okay, I think I saw something before I went. It says something about um, historical gold prices for 200 years since 1960. Okay, 1963. It was that. Look at that. $35.25. I really want to cry. $35, not even pounds. $35.25. Oh, God. So look at that. And as I just said, quoting the lady, the employee at the gold, at the Bank of England, she said it was 3000 plus to buy one now. Look, can you see that? So if my dad had bought one for his 12 children, one each, do you see that? And how much is it now? So I'm not a mathematician, but... Anyone who's really good at math can just calculate and see how many zeros in percentage that has gone up from 35 to now 3,005. Is that 1,000%? Is that 100,000%? I don't know. But it just gives you an idea. This is why we should save in gold. So uh, I'm waiting for questions. If you have any questions, ask. I am ready to answer the best of my ability. If I can't answer, I'll get back to you. I don't know everything, but the little I know... I am ready to spread wealth education, wealth creation. We all need to understand it. We're so uh, fixated on our qualifications, but if those qualifications won't help us to acquire wealth, it, it's nothing. It, it's really kind of uh, a waste of time, really. It brings me to a story I heard as well, because sometimes or we grew up thinking, a lot of us, that if you have a really great job, you earn a lot, then you'll be wealthy. Not necessarily so. There was a story I heard in one meeting I went to years ago. And this doctor, he, he earned about six figures yearly. And uh, no, it was an online course. I didn't, I didn't go to a meeting. This was online. So I was registered with an uh, organization and I was just... Uh, updating myself online, uh, going to the back office and going through the materials. And I came across this particular story. And the doctor was a six-figure earner. His secretary obviously wouldn't be six-figure earner, so she'd earn a lot less. Anyway, it got to a point, uh, he was living the life, his cars, his houses showed he was a very rich man. But this lady, she was prudent in her spending. It didn't say that she was... Um, penny pinching but she was just prudent obviously to me I understand it to be she was sensible in her spending so uh, it got to a point he became bankrupt I don't know why but I can hazard a guess those big houses he probably didn't pay for outright his cars he had probably on higher purchase and cars don't appreciate in value so for me personally, if I'm looking at wealth creation, I will not be looking at investing in cars. Houses, yes. Gold, yes. Cars, no. So that's another clue. To create wealth, we need to have properties. Start with one, then build it up. Properties, properties will appreciate in value. And whether you're just living in yours alone, if you look at when you bought it to the, what it's worth now, you, you can just see that that's a great way to create wealth. If you were to sell it now, how much well off would you be so decide for yourself so doctor was broke he became bankrupt um his uh, secretary was a millionaire i don't know if she was multi-millionaire so i'll stick with millionaire it said that she was wealthy he was not at the end of it because she put her money towards investments it didn't clarify what investments but she invested it and 
again, I would hazard a guess that she probably put it into property. She looked at where money would appreciate in value. So the purpose of this video today, and I'm bringing it to a close now, is if we want to create wealth, if we want to uh, understand how to become wealthy, to leave an inheritance to our children's children, which is the reason I started all this in the first place, love, nurture, and which is... Uh, the reason everyone, every parent, everyone needs to understand this for their families, for the world at large, is that you need to think, I've lost my train of thought, but basically you need to get wealth so that you can help spread the wealth, you can help end poverty. You need to get wealth so that you can better conditions not only for yourself but for others out there if you're broke and poor how are you going to be helping others to to uh, reach their potential but the thing is start with yourself first can you start saving a little and that brings me to the link now which I'm going to find uh, you can start saving a little you need to protect your income I think I've got my train of thought now protect your income start saving in gold no matter how little, save. And you can start saving, if I can find it, you can start saving uh, from 1 kg, uh, 2.5 kg, and they don't cost a lot at all. And you, it's free to register. You would need to register account because this company called Carrot Bars, they're showing people how to um, save money and it's ordinary people it's not people who can afford to go and buy gold bullion at three three thousand plus pounds and and buy a few and put it in a bank vault be this one or be the one in new york but or hong kong somewhere but we're talking about people who can afford to put aside 10 percent of their income a month uh, or a week and and just protect their future protect their income protect the future of their children so uh, that's the link for the Bank of England tour right there. This is the link that will take you. There are videos because you will need clarification. You may have questions. Uh, this video, I, I found it really enlightening, but that's not the video I'm talking about. It's this one, upcoming webinars and events. So under it, uh, above it, I think, there is a video just there, this one. So in between the Go Getters Worldwide 24 Carat and this Welcome banner to photograph to I took while I was at the meeting, you'll find the video. It's the official one. Take a look there. Uh, if that's not clear enough, then there's somebody who did another video here. Joined this awesome community under resources and tools. Now, this person is talking from the perspective as of an affiliate and a customer but we're looking at people who just want to be customers as i said business is not for everyone but looking after your finances should be everyone's business if i'm earning an income you're earning an income it's not the responsibility of someone somewhere else in the bank to to protect my income to look after my finances it's my job it's my responsibility to protect it to ensure that it grows to ensure my money works for me and i thought in the past it was just trading stocks and shares that's great but it can be very volatile when it works it's fantastic it's absolutely riveting to just sit there and and or come back after a day or two and find that your trade has gone up 20 50 percent or even a hundred percent but the thing is it's not consistent with gold you'll find that it will grow as we checked if i still have it open it will grow regularly it'll keep jumping you can do your own due diligence it'll keep going up every few years apparently 10 20 years or even less than and just look at the age of your younger child by the time uh, you've kept some gold f for them and 10 years from now it's appreciated in value you need to look look at long term how much different would their life be from yours at their age these are questions we need to ask ourselves. So wealth creation, this is it. This is what we under underestimate and this is how we underrate savings. Savings is not something you do where you just put your money in the bank for it to be hit by inflation. Savings is where you back your currency a little with gold affordably. Just look at what you can uh, put aside for gold. If you have £50 to save a month, why don't you split it and say, uh, I'm going to put 
25% uh, 25 of it to in cash in the bank and the other 25 I'm going to put towards gold or decide this month it will be in gold next month will be in cash and just keep doing it like that if inflation hits you're fine if it doesn't hit you're fine but the thing is history repeats itself and history has shown us 2008 so 10 years ago and apparently inflation comes around every few years so 10 years ago we were really hit by inflation so it's a clue. It's evidence. Back your money. Uh, it's yours. When you decide to exchange some of your income for gold, it's yours. It's not for someone else somewhere. I have started saving and uh, I'm still learning this. I'm not an expert, but I was just wondering, uh, I ordered some gold a few weeks ago. Where is it? Then I went online and saw that I had clicked the option that said store only. So it's installed for me in the their vaults there in Germany. And uh, the if you flip through the recent blogs I've done in the last week or two, you will find that it's a reputable company. They're, they don't owe any debt, so they're not taking our, our gold that is in storage to go pay for their debt. They're debt-free. They've been... Um, um, what's the word? They've been given the all clear by the London Bullion Office. I've forgotten what they're called, but it's all in the blog post and they can be verified. So some of my gold is there. Some is on, on its way to me because I didn't understand there was the delivery um, option or the store option. So uh, if I want store option, I don't pay for shipping. If I want store uh, delivery option I'm going to pay for shipping so these are things you need to consider but the thing is you are creating wealth you are uh, the money you're putting towards the gold comes to you or it's saved on your behalf and your beneficiaries also are noted in your back office you need to put them down there I put my four children down as beneficiaries so if I suddenly uh, uh, kill over one day they're going to every gold I've saved will go to my beneficiaries and their children's children which is the point of all this um so thank you so much for listening i am going to update i'm going to put the information in there i have said a few things but what has been underrated what i need to clarify is the fact that savings has been underrated it hasn't been given the props it should be given it's not so much how much you receive how much you earn it's how much of that you can put aside to savings we've got so many expenses nowadays but if you forget to pay yourself reward yourself and look out for your future your family's future your children's future then what's the point of all this you're just working as they say for the man so Thank you so much for coming on board. If this is Rita or Shagun, appreciate it. Uh, spread the word and uh, do take action. I look forward to comments in the future under this post. Thank you. Bye.